Astero Black and I am taking my 30 years of experience on the front lines of emergency response and emergency management. Episode number 26 and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the, the new direction here of the podcast and the live stream here where previously it was the Connected Leadership uh, podcast but we're, uh, we're heading in a new direction. We've been doing it wrong. We're approaching leadership. We're approaching leadership development the wrong way. And I'm telling you, it has been a long, long road and a long, long pathway to get to here. And man, oh man, so much of it is the wrong way. And we're getting the wrong results or the results that we don't that we don't need. And so we're going to talk about why you take a corporate HR leadership course and you don't see any change, or you read a book you don't see any change or you watch a YouTube video or something like that and, and, and you don't change. And worse, our manager, our boss takes a leadership course and you expect, all right, giddy up. We're going to see some changes in behavior there. They come back from the course, maybe a day or two of raw, 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 but then right back into the same patterns. So by the end of this episode, you'll have two ways that we really should be approaching leadership and leadership development. And most importantly, I'm going to talk to you about why. Now, before you uh, before you start to think that this is a bashing session where I'm going to be, you know, criticizing current programs, uh, thought leaders, um, you know, HR or anything like that, think again, think again. And I'm going to talk about why we got to where we are here in a little while and the different approach, but I want to be crystal clear. I'm even part of the, uh, the issue here too with, with my book. I contributed to the problem. I have a bookshelf full of the problem and there are a bunch of different authors there. And, um, and that really got me to thinking, but before I get there, l- let me introduce myself. I'm Daryl Black and I am here to help you lead from the inside out. I've spent almost 30 years of um, front li- on the front line of major disasters, emergencies, search and rescue missions all over North America. Things like Katrina and uh, you know some major floods and, and, and wildfires here in Canada, the two largest disasters we've ever had, uh, and hundreds and hundreds of search and rescue missions. I've spent 10 years as a project manager in a large corporate environment. And I'm here to take those lessons that I learned primarily during crisis and helping you apply them to your personal and professional lives. Now, the new brand, new direction. That is not new band, new direction, because isn't there, there's a band name, new direction. But anyways, I digress. Um, so this has been, uh, this has been an interesting um, pathway of a journey of mine, really. And you know, I've, I've uh, had 25 episodes of this uh, podcast here. I speak, I teach, I facilitate all over the place. And, you know, I was really, really f- figuring out why, why do we still have such a need for leadership training? And what is different about my approach? And, um, and, and why is it successful now? And yet not successful in some other ways. And what I'm really talking about is trying to really fine tune or uh, refine my message. And when I look at through look through the facilitations that I have done, the 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 keynote speeches and talks, and you know even my book here, while I kind of criticized it a little bit earlier as being part of the problem, my attempt I see now I see a lot more clearly was to really talk about what happens on the inside and the importance uh, around this concept of if you don't change what happens on the inside, you cannot, you cannot positively influence what happens on the outside. And as a leader, our job is to influence. It's to exert social influence over others to treat, achieve a goal. So, I really, uh, in an attempt to, to really sit down and, 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 and really figure out what, where am I going? What am I driving for? What is my message really all about? And I look back, as I said, I look back through my own operational career 
as a leader, I looked through my facilitations of programs. I looked through how I interact with people. I thought about what are the conversations I have when I'm sitting around having a beer or I've met somebody for coffee or something like that and we're shooting the shit. And, um, you know, what am I passionate about? What's driving me? What's my purpose? Well, yes, it's leadership. Of course it is. But more importantly, it's trying to drive home the fact that to be a good leader, we have to actually figure out what's happening on the inside, manage it, and control it first and foremost. Now, so in addition to that kind of opening up the hood and looking at my own operational career and, um, you know, my coaching and, and uh, you know, my hobbies, all of those types of things and my passion, I also looked at what is driving my journey? What is my journey as Daryl Black, the person? What is my journey as... Daryl Black, the, the parent? What is my journey that Daryl Black, the entrepreneur? And the amount of self-development that I've invested in, both successfully and most recently, extremely successfully, um, I realized that at the end of the day, success and failure doesn't lie with anybody else except me, except this guy right here. And in your case, you. 100% responsibility. 100% responsibility is what's required. And that 100% responsibility is yours and yours alone. So I come across a lot of people with quote unquote victim mentality. Well, my team sucks or I don't have enough money or uh, the corporate culture is toxic or you name it. And I get it. I get it. Those are all obstacles. Those are all challenges. But at the end of the day, it is up to you to make changes. Now that could be a change trying to change your job. Could be try to change, uh, maybe do a lateral move. Or how about you try to change how you deal with things? How about you deal with the fact that you're fearful sometimes? How about you uh, figure out that really what's driving your frustration and your stress is perception of lack of control or the fear that people are judging you and that you're, you're being made to look bad? That's on you. That is that is that is here. That is here. Now, once you can figure some of that stuff out and 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 you peel back the layers of the onion, then 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 you don't have any limits. That includes limits in life, that includes limits in your job, that includes limits no limits in your leadership journey. And that is the journey that I've been on and, and have been for so so long and I want to help you along that journey as well. So the whole principle, the whole premise of inside out leadership is that we need to, to control the inside first. We need to figure out a whole bunch of things and we'll talk about that. And then we can start to influence the outside. Now, that's not to say that just because I self-regulate really, really well and all of those things that I'm going to be a successful leader. Not at all. You absolutely need to have a strong awareness of the outside, but we're the outside world. Of course, you're influencing other people and events. So I would be naive to say, oh, just change how you how you perceive things. Well, that's that's a big part of it, but not all of it. So one of the things I'm going to be doing on this podcast and, and live stream is challenging a lot of the beliefs that you have. Uh, and not only challenge them, but break them down. But I'm not going to be like the uh, the old military where I break you down and, and uh, you know, kind of leave you there and then build you back up. It's going to be a softer touch for sure. But the principle will essentially be the same where I'll challenge the common beliefs that we have. And trust me, I've been spending a lot of time really thinking about what those are. And I'm here to tell you, there are a lot. And those beliefs, they're not empowering beliefs. So I'm going to talk about those in this podcast. I'm going to talk about them in live streams and, and going live on Instagram and Facebook and and my leadership programs, which one of which is coming out the end of January. I'm going to talk about those, but then I'm going to replace those limiting beliefs and those, frankly, incorrect BS beliefs with empowering ones, ones that are limitless, that allow you to really expand and feel better about your workplace, feel better about your, your family situation, a whole bunch of things. So why now? Why now? Like I said, I, I, uh, I, I was really struggling with fine-tuning my message, really figuring out what is it I am trying to say. Now, of course, in this online world, this social media uh, environment, 
It's so difficult to cut through the noise, so difficult. And I have a message that I feel passionate about, and that is that inside out leadership. And when again, when I look back through everything I've done, everything I'm passionate about, my purpose is really comes down to self leadership and controlling what happens on the inside. And I look at my own personal leadership experiences, that is 100% what it is. When I deploy to a, a particular situation, it could be a, a large scale disaster. Yes, all hell is breaking loose. Yes, it is tragic. Yes, there are so many things out of my control. But when I go in, my approach is very much the same initially. And I've talked about it before. When I was in, when I went to Pine Lake, tornado, a tornado just uh, that struck in the year 2000 in, with search and rescue. I remember, you, you know, go in, I, I get my briefing. There was as many as 100 people uh trapped believe trapped or or deceased that's a big deal that's a big deal so i received my briefing and uh i am walking outside to now brief my team and and a few others from search and rescue and i hadn't seen the the scene yet i hadn't seen where the tornado actually ripped through a campground just on the edge of a lake called pine lake so i thought, you know, I should probably just at least check this out, right? If I'm going to be barking orders at people, I should probably get a little lay of the land. So I walked, and I hadn't seen this, the scene yet, as I said. So I walked over the, the, the crest of the hill, and my breath was taken away. Just just like that. Just like that. I remember thinking, man, man, this is like a war zone. It's like a war zone. And you know what? You know where I went? I didn't go and look and say, okay, we got to do this. Oh, look, this is the perimeter here. These are how many rows of trailers that we've got. This is now, uh, you know, what is the weather going to be like? Um, how many people are around? Who's doing what? Yes, I did all of those things. But you know what I did first? I took a deep breath. And then another one. And I thought to myself, wow, I am overwhelmed. But then, but then I said to myself, I've got this one step at a time, one step at a time. Again, before I engaged with anything else, I controlled my inner emotions. I calmed myself down. I made sure I had the clearest of heads. I was able to um, get in a position where I could properly brief somebody. That, my friends, is where you need to start with your leadership journey. And that is where I have gone throughout all of my operational experience. When I go into a wildfire situation, we've evacuated 90,000 people. That's a big deal. Hospitals shut down. Water treatment is uh, partially working. The place is a ghost town. We've got toxic chemicals in the air that we're breathing in. The list goes on and on and on and on. Yes, we have to impact all of those things, but it starts with us as individuals, as leaders. If we can't control what happens on the inside, we cannot positively influence what happens on the outside. So one of the beliefs that I hear a lot is, um, I, you know, I just need to immerse myself in leadership. I, I, I need to get a certificate in it or maybe a degree maybe even a master's. And I get it. There are people that spend an awful lot of time and money on leadership training. And I'm not bashing that at all. In fact, it is a very worthy pursuit. And I, I commend people that do that. So that is a very common belief. I need a, a certificate. I need a degree. Maybe I need a master's. I need formal education. And I get it. I totally get it. We are inundated with, 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 with thought leaders, with philosophies, you just throw open Facebook and you've got all sorts of quotes and you have video clips of individuals talking about leadership and you've got ads running and you have all of this information, all of this stuff hitting you, telling you that, man, you know, you need to know more. You need to more know more. Everyone's an expert. So again, I get it. I totally get it. But a question I have for you, though, is if you had what you needed, then why do you continue to read more articles? Why are you looking at blog posts? Why are you watching or listening to this podcast and this live stream in the first place? Chances are you're not getting what you need.
So do you feel like you have leadership figured out? So get, give me a number, 100%, 80%, 60%. Do you, do you think you have a really cohesive team? Do you think that you're really self-aware? Do you think that you can go into any situation and have social influence over another person in an hour or a day or many days? Ask yourself those questions. And so I offer two alternative approaches to leadership. One is the inside out approach where we're approaching it completely wrong. We're approaching leadership development and leadership from the outside in all of the external factors. We're trying to figure out all of those things. And that's what we teach when really it needs to start here. And we've got way too much information out there and we are starving, starving, starving for tactics. So those are the two things we're approaching the two incorrect approaches. We need to go from the inside out. What happens on the inside, then we can positively influence those on the outside. The second one is we got to be way more tactical. We got to be way more tactical, and we'll talk about that. Now, I recognize that leadership is hard, but if you don't approach things different, differently as a leader and also leadership development-wise, you'll never be able to figure out this very complex variable that we call a human being. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be wondering why people just don't get it while they're, while they're still screwing up or, and, and why at the end of the day, you're absolutely peopled the heck out. I've heard time and time again, that people love their jobs, except for the people part of it. Yes. Yes. People are difficult. The variables of behavior are infinite when you're dealing with human beings. So you will continue to be stressed out. You'll continue to be frustrated. You'll be continued to be absolutely exhausted at the end of the day, which will impact your family. If you don't change how you approach leadership and leadership development. So what do I mean when I'm talking about the inside out? Well, very, very briefly, and I'll get into this in more detail. Um, we have multiple parts of our brain. We have a reptilian brain. So that's kind of that, that basic, very original part. Then we have what we call a limbic brain, and that's the emotional part. And then we have the prefrontal cortex, which is our kind of analytical brain. So we have the, 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 the uh, reptilian brain, kind of like the lizard brain. That is the survival. That is literally keep the lights on, keep the heart beating, uh, fight or flight. Okay, fight or flight. That's an important point. That's, that lives right in here. That lives in this, this lizard part of your brain. Now, the limbic part is the emotional part, and that's what starts to separate us from, from other animals, right? Our ability to emote over certain, certain situations. And then, as if that wasn't a big enough advantage, we layer on this prefrontal cortex, which allows us to do a lot of complex things, a lot of complex problem solving and, and all of those, uh, uh, you know, square root of this, a build the, the, build the uh, create a wheel, or send somebody to the moon or Mars or design a cyber truck that's running on electricity. That's prefrontal cortex stuff. Now, where we really have to hit is this reptilian or this lizard brain. This is where it, it, it has history on its side. And, and from an evolutionary perspective, perspective, it is absolutely uh, rigid in how it operates. It's very, very simple. If you think of it like a circuit board, let's say, where it's, it's um, you know, just a series of wiring that's uh, very, very difficult to change. And it's, it's solid. It's solid. There's no moving parts. It is reliable 100% of the time. And it has served us really, really well from an evolutionary perspective. Awesome. Thumbs up to that. So, the bad news is that it's entrenched. It's it's uh, it has that history. It has the evolution. It has a very specific job to do, and it does it really really well. So that's that's kind of the bad news. But the good news is it can be changed. That even that lizard part of our brain, which actually drives our behavior, it drives our behavior, not our prefrontal cortex, not our limbic brain. It's the lizard brain that really drives our behavior. But it can be changed. It can be reprogrammed. It can be resoldered if you want to talk about the circuit board. And I love that. And we're going to talk about it. But therein lies the problem. We have to work from the inside, from the lizard brain, and work out instead of the analytical brain 
and working inwards. So the model that you've heard often is uh, the the um, have, do, be. If I have this, if I do that, then I'll be this. So if I have uh, more money and if I take more leadership courses, I will be a better leader or I will be more senior in the organization. That is that is a wrong way of looking at it. And there are so many experts in this, but the one that I should ha highly recommend, one that I'm following right now, and, and I'm, I'm heavily immersed in, in a program of his, and that's Jim Fortin. Uh, so go ahead and Google that, the Jim Fortin for, for podcast. Highly, highly recommend uh, tuning in, in to him. He talks about the be do have where you have to be first and then you do and then you have and again that's tremendously complex and, and beyond the scope of what we're talking about here but we will be deep diving into it but we have to start on the inside we have to start on the inside start to reprogram that limbic brain that lit or the the lizard brain the reptilian brain first and then because that's where things like our identity lives who we think we are that's where habits live the beliefs that we hold values the ability to regulate our emotions, fight or flight, um, that, that's, that's where it starts. It starts with the lizard brain, it goes to the limbic brain, and then finally the analytical brain. So you can see how it is just how our approach seems to be incorrect. And it kind of lends itself to the fact that you continue to take courses, you continue to read books, you continue to read blog posts, you continue to watch videos, but you're, but you, but you're not progressing. Yeah, you pick up some tidbits tidbits, but ultimately we're talking about changing your behavior. We're ultimately talking about changing your beliefs and your values, or at least identifying them and really figuring out what your identity is and working from there. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the inside. And it's tremendously complex, and yet it's very, very simple. And it starts with that identity, and it starts with what habits we have. So once we really figure out what's going on there, then we can start to really, really cook with gas when it comes to leadership development and also leadership itself. And then once we've gone to the, we've done the, the inside identification piece, absolutely, we have to start working on the outside. Absolutely, it's very, very important to know what corporate vision is. It's important to realize what corporate values are. It's important to know policies and procedures. It's important to know standards and discipline. It's important to know procedures. It's important to know how to run a meeting, all of those things. And we'll talk about those as well. So it's that combined approach, but it's not outside in, it's on the inside out. I control what happens on the inside. Now I can positively influence what happens on the outside. So you can see this approach and why fundamentally the, the system is broken. So the inside out approach is the number one approach to take when it comes to leadership and leadership development. The second approach is that there are zero tactics talked about when we talk about leadership development and leading in general. Yes, we have a ton of knowledge and information out there, but we don't have actionable information. We don't have something that I can use. When I go into a, a, an emergency situation, I, I have to confess, psh, I don't bring my book. I actually bring my journal version of this, but I don't bring this. I'm not going to be sitting there in front of somebody and briefing them and talking about the 1100 leadership solution by Daryl Black. Okay, page 55. Now, I'm not saying that that you don't refer to things like this, but at the end of the day, I need something that I can connect with somebody in the moment. I need something that I can build respect with very, very quickly. I need a way that I can manage my own stress and the stress of those all around me as a leader. I need something in the moment. I need something tactical and actionable. So again, think to yourself, how many times have you taken a leadership course? How many books and articles have you read? Just, you know, exhibit A. Look at all of those. And that's just a small, tiny percentage. I've got a whole lot more when it comes to my tablet and e-readers and all of those things. I've read hundreds of books on it. I've read thousands of articles over my career. And while, again, they're valuable, there's not very many of them that I can really take something away and say, okay, this is something I can use. So that 
my friends, is the new world order, the inside out approach to leadership, lead from the inside out. So this podcast, this live stream, it's so exciting because I am going to be really diving into what that looks like. And we'll be handling the inside and we'll be talking about the outside. So don't worry. We'll talk about how do we set expectations? How do we do great one-on-one -on -one meetings? How do we provide feedback as leaders? We'll also be talking about what are your values? What are your fears? What are your fears? What are your beliefs? What stresses you out and how do you manage that stress? So we're in this for the long haul, ladies and gentlemen. So please, a couple of calls to action for you. One of which is subscribe to this podcast. And also, in the uh, at the end of this will be a URL. And I would ask that you sign up. It's a newsletter. It's my newsletter where you get weekly information, weekly content around the leading from the inside out. So I will talk about what happens on the inside. And I will be talking about what happens on the outside in a weekly free format. And in fact, if you sign up uh, pretty quick, you'll get my, uh, thrown in as a bonus, my, um, my defeat the beast of stress five-step method. All right, just write to your inbox. It's a video, it's an assessment, a whole bunch of other things. So again, uh, just go ahead and subscribe there and subscribe to the podcast. And, you know, wow, I, I am, I'm juiced. I'm jacked. I'm ready to roll. I'm really, really looking forward to this. And I'm really glad that I'm moving in this new direction. And I want you to join me with it. So thanks for watching.